Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I rise in, um, in response to the Honourable Member, the Member for Caithness, Sutherland and Easter Ross, his challenge, which was that this debate has to be of such quality that he will send it to his young constituents. So that puts me under pressure, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Coming. I hope so. Um, this debate comes at a time where there are going to be significant problems for ordinary people, millions of ordinary people up and down this country, indeed millions of people all over the world, in heating their homes, getting around, and it is, a, it is an opportune time for us to have this debate about decarbonisation. And I should start by saying that I strongly support not only the Minister on the Bench, who I know is a highly capable and effective Minister, but indeed the Secretary yeah, of State, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is also that. He's smiling. I'm being nice to you, Minister. I'm being nice. Um, and he's a very effective Minister. Indeed, it's an, actually a very effective department that's had a huge amount to do. And broadly speaking, I think they are doing a very good job. But the context of oil and gas prices rising is a very complicated one. And I think if the House would indulge me, I think it requires not just the government or indeed this House, but I think international markets and other countries to think about decarbonisation in a different way. As oil and gas prices rise structurally over time over the coming years, due to an increase in demand from emerging market countries in particular, if that prediction um, that many uh, in the City of London and indeed many um, investment banks and energy analysts think will occur. If that does happen, then there is a, in the short term, a significant problem for, lot, for millions of people across the world and indeed millions of people in this country. The way to deal with that is to increase the pace of decarbonisation, increase the pace of getting renewable energy used and in the ground uh, and indeed that helps our energy security as well. But we need to do that in the, at the same time as not, de as not demonising the major oil and gas companies that have the skills, the wherewithal and the capital to help us, do it, help us achieve that. And therefore, very, very subtle and effective government policy is required, working internationally with our partners to make sure that we can give these uh, energy, these major energy companies, the confidence to invest in decarbonisation, because they have the engineers, they have the capital, they have know-how all over the globe to help us achieve that aim. Did, there is no point us, and I speak as somebody who does a lo lot of work on these issues, as, as the House knows, there is no point us demonising anybody who holds shares in an energy company or saying, gluing ourselves to famous paintings. There is no point us doing that sort of thing because all that happens is not only does the price of oil and gas continue to go up, that makes people's lives harder and there may well be a backlash to the decarbonisation agenda if people perceive that this is not something that ultimately is going to help their lives, help their economy, help, their, help them heat their home, help them achieve. Yes, of course. We're obviously going to be discussing later the ways and means motions for the uh, energy sort of profits uh, bill, the so-called windfall tax. Would he not agree that so obviously companies such as BP and Shell have agreed to become sort of net zero companies, that if they believe that they're going to be net zero, they should put their money where their mouth is and maybe establish a net zero fund, which you know, could be then tapped into over a long period of time, which then could help pay for some energy efficiency measures, demonstrating it's not just green levies that are going to be paying for additional uh, net zero support mechanisms, and that in fact we can actually leverage in more uh, private finance. But let's you know, look to create a, a fund that could be uh, financeable over a long period of time, given that we are holding these companies to account to their net zero commitments? I thank my, I thank my honourable friend for that, and it's a typically well-made and excellent point, because the advantage of the major energy companies establishing clearly a long-term fund to do the investment that they say they're doing, in fact they are doing, but they say they want to do more of and the government wants them to do more of, establishing, in the, establishing a fund on that sort of basis 
would be helpful, not just as a signal to the market as to where they were spending, where they were using their capital, but also as a signal to the country that they were serious about putting their money where their mouth is. So I think it's a very good point. Of course. Interesting for giving way. Uh, I'm all in favour of, of fossil fuel companies creating funds, but wouldn't another way of actually achieving this be to make sure that the government isn't giving this extraordinary subsidy to oil and gas companies as part of the windfall tax, this so-called 80% um, investment allowance, which precisely incentivises the opposite kind of behaviour that he's speaking so eloquently about? I thank the, the Honourable Lady for her point. I think that the issue around subsidy or not, or indeed for another word for support, support for energy companies or not. It's about trying to achieve what we want them to do. The investment allowances, their various other things, should be tweaked or changed to incentivise more directly the sort of behaviours that we're talking about here. And on that, I support her. But I'd like to continue because I'm, I'm being nodded at by various people about time. I'll make a little bit of progress, if I may. We've heard a lot today about buildings and the need for a, a sort of big insulation plan for want of a, a better description, and I strongly support that. But it's also important that we have micro measures that help individuals. There's no point government coming in saying, what is it Ronald Reagan said? The scariest words in the English language were, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, right? We need big macro ideas, we need the big plans. But at the same time, we need to incentivise individuals and families who want to help with the transition. They want to do the right thing. They want to make their decisions to decarbonise. So we can use things like smart household systems to allow users to manage when to charge their electric cars or to optimise when their heating comes on or when to turn their fridge up. Market reforms to allow small energy suppliers to actually supply local areas. Because I can see this, I know this in my own constituency, when there's a proposal for something, and I say to the energy company, the small supplier, and I say, can you do something for the local village or the local community so that they can benefit from this, whatever, whatever the form of energy is nearby? And they say, look, the market isn't structured to really allow that to happen. Now, that's a big problem, because it means that we are not getting the support of the local community. We're not but tapping into that latent desire to decarbonise, yes, working with government at a very macro level, but also at a very micro level as well. And I'll give way. Madam Deputy Speaker, I think the Honourable Member for Hitchin and Hartland need have no fears. I shall put a large red star beside his contribution when I send off the copies of Hansard. If I pick him up right, it, surely the point is this, is that anyone who thinks that the Beatrice Wind Farm, which I mentioned in my own contribution, came to be without the expertise of oil firms who've installed mighty things in the North Sea, they'd be very much mistaken. And these same oil firms he's referring to are going to be crucial if we are to establish large-scale floating offshore wind energy generation. I thank the Honourable Gentleman, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for that point, and I couldn't agree with, with him more. And it's a really difficult point to make because it seems counterintuitive, but we are going to need the major energy companies to do their bit, use what they have in order to achieve what we all agree we need to achieve, which is faster decarbonisation. We need macro measures from government. We need to work much harder on buildings and insulation, but we also need micro measures to help individuals and small communities invest themselves in decarbonisation, make those decisions themselves. And I commend uh, these estimates. I'm sure the money will be spent wisely, particularly after they've listened to the quality of this debate.